every single one of our uh, pose morphs and um, that would effectively finish the tutorial so as it turns out it seems like the upper lip animations plus the lip stretching animations are having a significant effect on our face um, giving us a lot of our speech um, interesting thing to note about these pose morphs um, these morphs right here this uh, VSMW and these these all these weird ones with these weird names these are your phenome morphs and normally these would drive um, your lip sync animation they would basically create um, animation um, based on the sounds of the particular language that you're making um, creating very realistic animations uh, that drive the lips um, what's interesting about Braco Pro Face is you know through the use of things like the lip kiss which creates like a pucker and uh, the lip corners up and down and the stretching of the lips it almost creates the same phenomes um, but kinda sort of just uses a uh, uses the morphs in a very interesting way it's good this the science of it is very very intriguing um, I imagine the way my face was oriented and different things like that. I don't know. Maybe I was just making a stink face the whole entire time. I wasn't really angry when I was taking this tutorial down, but uh, you know, it gave her gave her really, really like she's um just really argumentative. Um. You could use a uh, a lip stretch morph, probably something like um, the lip smile wide. Um, and there is a uh, there is a morph for that in here somewhere. Um, but that's kind of like a lip stretch, but it also has that up curl. If you did that, she would look a little bit more happier when she's talking. So that's interesting replacement. Um, you have so many morphs here. Uh, there's so many things you can do. Like I said, as Microsoft increases their uh, production on um, you know these morphs and on their uh, SDK, um, programmers like Brakel and other programmers that are going to start to get into this scene. They'll be able to produce uh, much more face morphs um, that'll take more advantage of you know your different shapes, shape morphs here. Um, and like I said, with tools like Face Shift, you already have the ability to output markers that define like almost every area of the face based on the concept of morphs and uh, the reconstruction of the face based on um, point data. Based on the proximity of point data and, and some interesting calculations that like Face Shift does, um, it's able to actually generate markers for all of the some 23 to 50 points that are on a uh, face robot rig in soft image and you're able to drive some really amazing really realistic animations out of that program already it's just gorgeous um, I look forward to uh, doing a lot more of this workflow with you guys in the future uh, let's put this on low quality settings here and try to render again should go significantly faster look at that only took like six seconds to render and um, just look at the expression on her face um, the morphs and, and just just being driven by facial animation like that is just it's just a beautiful beautiful thing um, we could actually go into our picture viewer with our low quality settings um, go to our output we could do all frames to generate like a really quick play blast um, 
we could use a film video aspect ratio and it's TDV widescreen is pretty nice so some standard definition here um, and then uh, we have this little gray sort of area here um, it's kind of difficult to see in the screen recording here uh, based on the fact that uh, there's a lot going on in the scene as well a lot of light colors um, if we turn off our HDR sky we can see it a lot better now there's a light border here that's defining the area that's going to be captured in the picture viewer when this gets rendered so we can kind of sort of center the important part of our scene which is going to be her facial animation um, right here in the center and leave some a little bit of nice space probably uh, adhere to some um, thirds um, cinematography here and basically kind of offset her a little bit in the center so there's more interest uh, generated and um, we can pretty much render this and go ahead and hit the uh, render act active project with picture viewer and uh, we say we don't want to we don't want to save our project files and um, we hit this play button go ahead and just play blast through and um, as it renders it's going to continuously give us more and more op uh, more and more frames here actually normally it would do that but for some particular reason right now it's not it doesn't refresh automatically so actually we'll just let it render a little bit and uh, we'll pretty much play blast once it's done alright guys so we're back and uh, we've let it render uh, few thousand more frames um, took the better part of 30 minutes uh, give or take um, still not close to the final frame but uh, we have enough to play blast right now and see how this looks in real time so if we hit the play button here um, as you can see with those uh, first couple of frames um, what happened Probably, um, you, if you notice with the Brickle Connect earlier, um, it was recording everything, including um, the times when my face actually wasn't recognized yet. So pretty much, it froze my face in this particular position, which is, you know, a bad position or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, you could easily rectify that. Like I said when you get into your uh, non-linear editing in uh, After Effects and Premiere or uh, you know whatever uh, editing program you're going to use and uh, you can pretty much cut out that frame and then you know clean up this video according to the audio synchronize the audio and the video together and kind of just sort of clean them up together as one but um, ignoring those uh, first 10 or so frames while I was trying to get my face into the shot now um, she's uh, actually animating based on what I was saying during that last part excellent and, um, we're seeing it in relatively real time this little red indicator here is telling us of course um, that not all the frames are cached in uh, memory currently um, and that's mainly because there are just so many frames here in the, uh, the picture viewer it's kind of difficult for it to actually cash out all those frames for us um, however it's giving us reasonable playback which is great um, we could also export this out as a video and get our complete real-time playback but uh, overall um, it appears to have come out pretty well uh, we could use different morphs probably um, 
better attempt to uh, make the, uh, the teeth inside and different things, you know, look a little bit nicer. Um, and of course, you could create a uh, simple keyframe probably really, really, really quickly um, here in the timeline where where you could uh, keyframe out her blinking. Um, one of the things I did while the uh, video was also paused, um, you'll notice that you heard uh, audio scrubbing. Uh, you can actually add the audio track here as a special track in your timeline. If I go ahead and delete it and um, I click on my summary here I can actually go ahead and create a special track and create a soundtrack and then with the soundtrack property selected here in the attributes manager I could actually add a sound file and load up the Brickle Connect wave capture and uh, Cinema 4D will play the audio while I'm scrubbing which is beautiful though I found it didn't work as well as I would have hoped um, ultimately, uh, after finishing the facial animation here and getting the timing right, um, where I you I would, you know, take uh, take note of the particular time that the animation comes in, and then I would uh, synchronize that in a program more dedicated to the uh, the actual video editing, uh, like uh, Premiere, and uh, you would synchronize your audio there to your uh, to your your lips basically cut any frames of animation that you didn't need in there um, I'll probably go over that workflow at a later date just to give you an idea of, uh, of the finishing of a scene um, that may or may not actually be my next tutorial I'm, I'm, I'm debating uh, but you guys can let me know in the comments uh, what you would like my next tutorial to be on um, in this multi-pipeline workflow. Like I said, we'll be doing things with the Motion Builder, showing how to add motion in Motion Builder and bring it back into Cinema 4D. Uh, we'll be doing things with Face Robot uh, to be able to add facial animation using um, this cool new program, Face Shift, um, as well as playing around with Brickle Connect's uh, Face Robot uh, connectivity. Um, we'll also be doing some things in After Effects, doing a character cleanup and um, Photoshop, uh, doing some uh, illustration finishing, uh, fast illustration with Daz. Uh, we'll be doing some rigging, we'll be doing some weighting, uh, some more material things. Uh, in Marvelous Designer, we'll be designing um, a dress and clothing and then we'll be using MDD caches to bring it back into cinema here and uh, have realistic cloth animation. Uh, we'll be doing a few things with the cloth engine and we'll be doing things with hair. So of all those subjects, uh, if you want to see one really, really, really badly, um, you know, put it in the comments. Um, let me know uh, what would be your favorite subject uh, to tackle in this uh, this multi pipeline workflow. Um, you know, we've got ZBrush uh, texturing, modeling in ZBrush, bringing the results back into Cinema uh, using ZBrush's normal maps, uh, fiber meshes, and things like that. The texture in ZBrush bring the results back in here and basically have beautiful skin. Uh, texturing real real uh, reference pictures, real reference skin textures to a model like this and bringing them back in to make uh, to make things look beautiful, adding wrinkles in ZBrush. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's a whole lot I want to I want to teach you guys and I just can't wait to do it. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments uh, what you guys, of everything I said, what you guys would love to learn next. Um, and uh, this has been Elder and Logistic Lumiere. And um, you guys.
guys. Take care.